Yeah, it's called decentralized command. It's called humility, right? So, so decentralized command, extreme ownership. This yep. is the fundamental concept of hey, we're gonna we're gonna listen up and down the chain of command. We're gonna let our frontline people. Who knows better? If Mike's in the field with his platoon, and I'm back in the in the in the forward operating base somewhere, and he needs to make a decision. Who 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 knows to make a better decision? Is it me or is it him? It's it's him. 99.9 percent of the time there's that small percentage of the time where i happen to know because i'm in a i'm i'm in a further away position that there's enemy m- moving in or that there's a support element coming to him and i can say mike don't go west hold what you got there's a support element coming your direction right now and he goes oh okay thank you and and so but most of the time he's in the field and he says, hey, this is what I see. This is what I'm going to do. And I say, awesome, do it. Let me know how we can support you. Or here's some elements I'm going to move to support you. So that's decentralized command. The the biggest hindrance to decentralized command is ego. Is me going, you shut up, Mike, and do what I tell you to do. You don't know what you're doing. You're junior to me. You haven't been as long as me. You haven't been in, in as long as me. You need to listen to me. Yeah. It's like, no, actually. I'm stoked when one of my subordinate leaders comes up with a great plan. That that makes me is that makes me that makes me eminently happy because now I can say, "Oh, Mike, that's a great plan. You know what? I couldn't come up with that plan. You run and execute it." Now, who has ownership of that plan? It's all Mike, and he's yeah. going to run with that plan, and he's going to make it work. He's going to overcome any obstacles. That's what's going to happen. Why? Because he he created the plan. It's his plan. As opposed to me dictating a plan to him and saying, this is the way you will do it and you won't deviate from what I've told you to do. Well, then how, how's, what, what's he going to do when he gets out in the field and hits an obstacle? He's going to go, oh, you know what? Jocko's plan sucked and we're not going to go that way. You know, you set up a culture like that where even a new guy, yeah, where his or her opinion matters, then you set up a culture for success. And I'll tell you why. And I'm going to re- refer back to the task unit bruiser. They set up front that, hey, even if you're a new guy, you lead. And if everyone's leading, we win. And then you fast forward through the, the the one year of training that we had leading up to the Battle of Ramadi. The new guys on their first deployment within Task Unit Bruiser were some of the high performing individuals within that task unit. Um, I mean the 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 accolades that came out of it. You know, uh, unfortunately, we we lost some new guys. Michael Monsoor, who who made the most selfless sacrifice uh, by jumping on a gra- grenade to save three other seals brand new guy, uh, Ryan Job, uh, laying down cover fire for his team to move, brand new guy. Uh, Mark Lee, uh, you know, killed during a firefight, again, covering his uh, his brothers. And then, you know, I, I can say it, Johnny Kim, because he's, uh, uh, you know, in the public now, but Johnny Kim, now a NASA astronaut, was a brand new guy who was awarded the Silver Star um, during, the, during that deployment. Why? Because they set the culture up front that lead speak up and lead we're listening no doubt about it man if you think that me okay because i was in charge of tasking your prisoner mm-hmm. if you think that i can sit there in any combat situation and control like a puppet master the elements that are out on the battlefield it's just it's it's literally impossible to do i don't care who you are i don't care how good you are you don't have the cognitive capacity to do that and it happens in businesses. And again, this is this is we see this all the time in businesses. As the businesses grow, you you talked about going from ten people to a hundred people. Well, if you've got a CEO that's a good, solid leader, and he likes to control things, with ten people he can pull it off. For sure, with ten people he can pull it mm. off. He's a workaholic. He's working twenty two hours a day, twenty hours a day, eighteen hours a day. He's on. He's in every meeting. He can he can pull that off. When he gets to a hundred people, you can't pull that off anymore. There's it's 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 physically, humanly, cognitively impossible to do that. So if he hasn't or she hasn't set up the culture strong enough that people understand how they're supposed to operate, then they're not going to operate properly. So, you know, that that's that's real commander's intent. And it is it's culture. Commander's intent is or a culture is almost like a broad commander's intent that overlays the entire the entire group of individuals that you work with. Everybody knows everybody knows this is what we're this is what we're moving towards.